Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Panic spreads on Wall Street as the market pulls in 1.5%. And now the NASDAQ is only up 53% on the year. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Obviously, I'm just joking around. We'll get to that in a second. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you. Thank you very much for finding this. Thank you very much for tuning in. And thank you very much for spending uh, a few minutes with us, kind of discussing uh, the day and the day uh, ahead. And that, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Nobody knows what's going to happen uh, you know, a week from now, let alone uh, tomorrow. But again, we're always prepared. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, everything was going normal today. You know, If you've been trading the market just in the last several weeks, you kind of know the story. Uh, higher highs, higher lows, every dips of getting bought. Everything was all good. Matter of fact, you know, if you look at, uh, if you look at today, uh, if you look at today's day, Started out very orderly, just like everything, you know, everything else, right? Uh, we talked about Microsoft yesterday, you know, 53, uh, 373, 76, uh, 374.20 uh, needs to build and confirm pre-market highs. Softy went to 76. Uh, NVIDIA, and we'll get back to the downside here in a second, but NVIDIA 497 upside, 489 downside. You know, NVIDIA ran up three points, hung out there pretty much the whole day. Uh, Apple 197 needs to build, right? Apple went up almost a dollar. Uh, Deer stopped basically at that level. Uh, Google was definitely the trade of the day today. Uh, 39, 39 rejected twice. 39 40s needs to confirm. Uh, went almost almost to 42. Everything was good, right? Everything was good. This one stalled out. Didn't do anything. Marvel uh, 60 30s went up about 30 cents. Came back and nothing, nothing really there. Uh, and that's about it, right? So everything was going good. Um, I logged off around 2.30. The Nasdaq was up 30 points. You know, I went to the gym, you know, clear my head, get my workout on. And, um, you know, I joked around, literally joked around. I said, come on, market guys, just give the Bears, you know, give the Bears a red close. Good, they'll throw them a ball. And good Lord, man, the Shapiro algo really kicked in. By the time I, you know, by the time I got to the gym... Uh, by the time I got to the gym, I saw all these people texting me like, the hell is going on at the market? I'm like, I'm in the gym. I don't know what's going on in the market. And, you know, there was obviously no news. And, you know, look, the most important part that you, and we, we talk, we've been talking about this for weeks. Uh, if you go back to video after video after video, we don't know when this was going to stop, right? Eventually it was, you know, I, I've been saying that pretty much on every video in the last three, four days. We don't know when it was going to stop. Uh, is this a uh, day... A type of an outlier event, and then tomorrow we resume. Who the hell knows, right? Who the hell knows? Uh, but the point is, if you kept on pushing and pushing and pushing, especially stocks that are way overextended, eventually you're going to get caught. You know, I, we know we primarily now uh, trade channels. Um, I did get, I, we did sell, I did sell uh, the te my Tesla, uh, my last ten percent of Tesla. I was up about eleven on it. Uh, I sold it up three dollars today, uh, but it's all right. You know, listen, it is what it is. A good trade, re regardless. But, you know, this is one of those scenarios that the market really didn't need uh, news. It really didn't need an excuse. Uh, we you know we, we've been saying this for, for a long time. The market is never as good as you think. And the market is never as bad as you think. And if you were irresponsible and if you didn't know the previous day's channels and you didn't know all that good stuff, you were going to get caught. And we, we've just, I think we actually talked about this in last night's video that if you really, you know, traded with the euphoric glasses on, the rose-colored glasses and didn't understand the previous day's range, was important you could give back i think we i literally said that in last night's video you could literally give back a month two months worth of uh progress in one candle and that's exactly what happened you know roughly around as uh, soon as i left at around 2 30 again everything was all good right everything was all good and then the earth just fell just fell and the nasdaq just completely imploded absolutely imploded as you can imagine everything uh, involved with the Nasdaq, everything. I think everything in general uh, was exactly the same chart. Stocks got absolutely pulled, and the question is now, what the hell do we do? How does the market recover? Now we're only up 53% for the year. 
uh, with, you know, roughly about, what, seven, eight days left in the trading year. I'm obviously tongue-in-cheek here, but, you know, again, this is the market. Um, again, is it really crazy to think we could get a day two uh, tomorrow? Honestly, I would like to see a day two. I really would. Um, you know, this is the first close, and if you were watching the video, uh, you kind of know the importance of uh, the five-day moving average, uh, at least for me. Uh, this is the first close below the five-day moving average on the queues. That means it's probably uh, going to be the first close below the five-day moving average on a lot of your favorite names, a lot of the high flyers. You don't really need to be very creative. Just you know, looking at uh, chart, charts, say the big flyers, NVIDIA, Tesla, uh, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, right? Big, the big high flyers. Uh, is it possible for them to get a day two tomorrow? Oh, that's kind of my game plan for tomorrow. You know, I, I would love to see um, I would love to see a gap up tomorrow because we we did see again we did see uh, the loss of the five day today. I would like to see a gap up tomorrow. Stocks get stuffed into uh, the declining supply zone. Uh, take out today's channels, right? Take out today's bottom channels and maybe give us uh, a day to move to the downside because again we do have room. Like if you look at the cues. If we confirm today's channels tomorrow, who knows? Maybe we get down to three ninety nine again. That's four dollars on the queues. That's fine, right? If you look at the video, right? If you look in the video for a second, the video closed right at the ten day moving average. If we confirm that, maybe it gives us another five seven dollars, right, into the next support zone. That's fine. If you look at Tesla, right? If you look at Tesla, this is how quickly you know things change in the market. If you look at Tesla, um, you know. It came, it came back down. It's going to be basically around the 10-day moving average. If it loses the 10-day tomorrow, who knows? Maybe it gets down to 41, 42, another four or five clients in there. So there, there's definitely a lot of value for tomorrow. Again, as, as the saying goes, stocks take the you know, you know, stairs up and they take the elevator down. And we've been basically taking the stairs up now for 11 and three quarters of months uh, going into the last seven, eight days of the trading day. Uh, you know, would it shock me, you know, if we, you know, bounce back tomorrow, nothing shocks me again. That's what the market is, but the value. Okay. I don't know what the market, how the market's going to close tomorrow. I'm not, not looking here, uh, trying to guess, but the value, the value, the meat and potatoes of potentially what can happen tomorrow in the tape is obviously to the downside. So, you know, I am prepared, uh, to the downside tomorrow. I'm basically watching, uh, you know, the, the 10 stocks that we trade. I figure if one loses the bottom of the range, they're all going to lose the bottom of the range, right? They they trade in tandem. If you look at uh, every single stock, right? Every single stock is going to mirror the NASDAQ 100, right? Look at Tesla intraday, right? Look at Tesla, Microsoft. It might as well be the same stock, right? It's the same chart. Once they one go, they all go. Apple, uh, Meta, uh, Amazon. It doesn't make a difference. Every single one of them. It's, just, it's literally the same thing. So, uh, the best value for tomorrow, again, I don't know the closing price of what the market's going to do tomorrow, but the best value, at least for my book, is if we could get a gap up, uh, or if we don't get a gap up, we do get a gap down, uh, opening range lows after the first uh, rally attempt, and see if we could get uh, a second day of, um, you know, second day of selling. We'll see. You know, we'll see. At this point, uh, with only seven, eight days left uh, in the year, I'm just basically going to uh, scalp channels, you know, that's all it is. I'm just looking at this scalp channels. I don't even care which way, um, you know, but from what I see here based on today's close and how everything looks going into tomorrow's session, if we could get uh, that second day of selling, you're going to have some pretty good uh, intense uh, second wave of sellers stepping. We'll see, you know, we'll see exactly what happens. Other than that, you know, other than that, business as usual, uh, business as usual, um, you know, this is a, a very, very unique year. Um, I, you know, a lot of people try to compare 2020 with, uh, the dot-com era of 1999 and 2000. And I said, ah, I don't think so. Um, and then a lot of people tried to compare 2023 with 2020. I'm like, ah, nah, I, I think 2023 is closest. I think we started talking about that yesterday. If, if I did, I apologize for repeating it, but I think 2003 is going to go down to um, a memorable way of uh, traders that traded in 2009 was that V-shaped recovery after uh, the financial crisis. And that's exactly what we saw here. We saw this magical uh, V-shaped recovery uh, from the October lows. And, and the way we talked about this for, you know, for a while, we talked about this, uh, you know, the way the same way sellers got tired in the October lows? Is it possible buyers just got tired today? 
right? That's that's the whole point. That's the whole point, guys. You ha you have to always understand the market's never going to be as good or bad as you think. Uh, every single day is its own momentum. Every single day is its own value. Certain days you'll get phenomenal value, right? Expansion of of expansion of um, channels. Everything is crazy, and then the next day. We're going to go through a distribution zone and you know, stocks are trading within 50 cents of each other for, for three and a half hours. So I don't think we'll have that distribution day tomorrow. I do think uh, if we do confirm today's channels, I believe we will have a second day of selling. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's not going to cost me any money, but at least that is the game plan. We're going to keep it nice, sweet, short today. Uh, tomorrow is my normal off day. It's Thursday. Uh, again, you don't need to be creative going into uh, tomorrow's session. If you're looking for value to the downside, just go to the NASDAQ 100. The first 10 names I trade every single day. Basically, I'm just watching their channels back to the downside. Let's just see, right? Let's see if today was literally a, a one day of an outlier event and the market's going to go right back up tomorrow or are we going to get uh, our magical day two, um, you know, carpet pull or rug pull, whatever it's called. We shall see, said the blind man. We shall see. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.